Does your organisation do continuous improvement? Really? Is improvement continuous? Is it real? Perhaps you just fix today's problems rather than proactively seek well-targeted performance improvement. Are the right processes selected for improvement? You can't deliver the right improvements to the wrong process. Wouldn't it be good to get beyond being demand-driven and proactively seek improvement opportunities, driven by performance anomalies and ideas? But how can that happen in the gritty reality of managing a real-world organisation with all its complexities and latencies, impossible demands and human frailty? We can do it. We just need to go round in circles. In this Process Insight, I want to introduce two process management circles. Conveniently, they're called Trigger Circles. Or if you prefer, they were originally called the two virtuous circles. And I think of them as a meta model for management and nothing less than a framework for perpetual process improvement. Here they are, meet the circle. You can see we've got two circles, PO or process ownership circle uh, and the PI or process improvement circle. And we'll go through each of these in detail in a moment, but let's just talk about them generally here first. So the PO circle, if you like, is about process management and the PI circle is about process improvement. The O circle is going to help us make wise choices about which process to improve because it's important to remember that if we choose the wrong process to improve, we cannot get the best improvement. We might spend a lot of time trying to improve a process which really at the end of the day is not having a big impact on organizational performance. So we've wasted a lot of time and effort and we've missed the opportunity as well to improve a high impact process. So the PO circle We'll turn at the cadence of the process execution, we'll be gathering data, we'll be making assessments, and we'll be make, making decisions about what we need to do uh, about those assessments. And that'll be happening continuously. And then the PI, or process improvement circle, is the way in which we'll look at a process, analyze it, come up with in uh, changes, improvements, and make sure those changes get made. So this is the process improvement circle, anybody's process improvement method. So the two circles, and just two, and it's a simple diagram. I hope you agree, because I've spent a long time trying to make it as simple as possible, but no simpler. Uh, so, because I think that's what process management, one of the things process management can bring to management, is some simplicity, some focus. Not more complexity, we don't need that, but I think the two circles help us do that. Firstly, we make wise choices about which process to improve, and, and then we can go on and make the improvement and really test and build a business case. And we're doing this not for our hundreds or thousands of processes, of course, but we're doing it for those high impact processes. It'll change for the organization, but it might be 20 or 30, or perhaps it's 40 or 50, but it's that kind of number. It's not the hundreds or the or the thousand. So they're the two uh, process improvement uh, circles. Let's though look at each of them in turn. <clears throat> so here we are at the PO circle, process ownership circle, and you can see that it's got three nodes. It's got the node uh, target, uh, assess, and respond. Target, assess, respond. Target, assess, respond. Target, assess, respond. I think that's the drumbeat of good process governance and good process management. And if you can hear that drum beating, then there's good process management going on, and good process management will lead to good process improvement. Let's check in with each of the <coughs> each of the nodes. So target, we're setting the, the, the performance uh, targets. We're setting the KPIs for the process and, and the targets. You know, what are the critical few KPIs and what are the critical few targets? If this process was working as well as its key stakeholders wanted to, what would it be doing and how would we know? That's how you, that's the question to ask to find the process KPIs. So we've got some KPIs and targets and then we'll come around to assess and assess. We're going to do two things at assess. Firstly, we're going to assess the performance numbers, of course. You know, the target's nine out of 10 and, you know, is it nine out of 10 or is it eight out of 10? or is it nine and a half out of ten, we'll, we'll assess the performance, uh, the numbers, the objective assessment. But this node is called assess, not measure, because there's another thing we want to take into account here as well, and that's new ideas for change. The innovative piece, the innovation can come in at this point. Are there new ideas? Maybe we're hitting all our KPIs, everything's fine, no, no change to make there, but here's a new idea, here's a new bit of technology, here's a new way of thinking. And although the way in which we might think about innovation and, and the way in which we arrive at this place might be different. Um, I don't like the idea of separating process improvement and innovation because 
if, if we're not changing processes with innovation, then I'm not sure what else is going on. So it's important that we don't separate them, but bring them together and happens right here at Assess. So we assess for performance and we assess for ideas. And now we've got to respond, because if we don't respond, then what was the point? Three things might happen at the respond node. One is nothing. KPIs are fine. Uh, we don't need to change anything. There aren't any ideas. Performance is good. Nothing to see here. Move on. And maybe that's what would normally happen. Maybe that's the, the majority of times the circle turns. Maybe that's the outcome. The second thing that might happen is that we might say, oh, we need to review the KPIs and the target. And that might be because, well, we haven't done it for a while and we should. Maybe it's every six months or 12 months. We should have some review. Perhaps that's a quick review, but you know, are we still measuring the right things? That's a good question. Or it might be something changed about the context of the process, something about our customers, something about uh, we've made some improvement to the process that now requires us to measure something different or not measure something that we used to. Uh, or maybe there's some regulatory change, whatever there is, some other context. So we need to make a change uh, to the KPIs and or the targets. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing might be that, yes, there is a performance uh, issue, <clears throat> a current or emerging performance problem. And by the way, it would be nice, wouldn't it, to be able to predict emerging performance problems and fix them before they arrive. So we've got a performance problem or we've got some idea to test. And how are we going to do that? We'll do that in the PI circle. So at this point of respond, one of the things we might be able to might want to do is to trigger a turn of the PI circle. OK, so here we are at the PI process improvement circle. Now, <clears throat> this is anybody's process improvement methodology. This might be Sprint PIP, it might be CME, it might be Lean Six Sigma, it might be something you've made up. It doesn't matter. It's shown here in its most generic form, as is, to be, to do. So you know, as is, current state, to be, the future state, what do we want it to be? And to do is just my shorthand way of summarizing all of the things that we've got to do to create the new as is. Which, by the way, is the intent, the objective of process improvement, isn't it? We're not about creating a 2B. That's a PowerPoint presentation or a report or something. What we want to create, success is about creating a new as is. So we've got to get past the 2B back to the as is. So we make the change. Uh, we, we do the analysis, collect the data, whatever our method is, and we'll recommend a change if we found a business case for change. And we can recommend that and we can shape it up. And then those change projects need to happen so that we can then we're back at a new as is. Now, sometimes these kinds of changes might take a short time. Maybe it's a day or two or a week or two, but sometimes it's months, perhaps many months, depending on the nature of the change. But here's the thing. <clears throat> the PO circle, kept turning. So we will know always what the level of performance of the process is. And we'll know whether it's changing for good or for bad or whatever else. And all sorts of things might be changing around the process. The process context might be quite dynamic. <clears throat> so we're always testing uh, there. We've always got our eye on the ball and we're trying to keep, keep the crosshairs on the target uh, performance. And it's all a moving uh, feast, but, but the PO circle keeps turning for exactly that reason. And then we can actually prove whether or not the, the PI circle changes actually made a difference. So you can see what I mean when we say we've got we we've we've got a continuous uh, and perpetual improvement engine going on here. PO circle is helping us make wise choices about which process to improve, and the PI circle is helping us to make the right changes. So I talk all the time about get the circles turning, and this is another definition I think. Perhaps this is the four-word definition of process-based management. We get the circles turning. We're continuously assessing the performance of the high-impact processes that we've got under active management, and we're making decisions about whether the performance is right, what we're going to do with new ideas, are they worth checking out, are we measuring the right things, consciously going around that uh, that circle at the cadence of the process execution. So you know, in simple terms, uh, every time the process executes, we've got performance data. So that might allow us to do another uh, assessment. And that maybe that's near real time, in which case we, we would uh, have continuous data stream. Or some of our processes, of course, maybe they execute uh, once a week, once a month, once a quarter, once every four years. So we're not, you know, the, the, the longer the, the gaps between execution, the more sparse the data. Uh, but nevertheless, we still need to make maximum use of that data. And, and that'll let us trigger the PI circle to understand what we can improve, you know, and make sure there's a genuine business case for doing something real, because otherwise the changes just won't uh, get made. OK, so let's summarize here. So I think the key word in all of this is continuous. We talk about getting the circles turning. We want them turning continuously. We want to be always looking. You know, we talk about continuous improvement, don't we? And oftentimes continuous improvement... <laughs> 
<laughs> Oftentimes it's got two problems. One is that it's not continuous, and the second problem is that there is not much improvement. Uh, but we can certainly fix the continuous piece here with the PO circle, and we can fix the improvement part with the PI circle. So a perpetual improvement engine. I think that's a powerful thought. If we don't pick the right process to improve and to manage, then we can't optimise performance for the organisation. And that's our intent, to optimise organisational performance. We've got to pick the right process. You know, if we're an airline and, and all we're trying to do, I mean, they do more than this, of course, but if all we're trying to do is improve the, find, the process to find lost luggage, then we'll go out of business. I mean, we might get really, really good at finding lost luggage, but that's hardly going to be the process that's going to take us to the, to the, the top of the, of, of the market. So we want to be, be very sure that, that we're working on the right processes. We have to fix lots of processes, of course, but the ones that we're going to actively manage are the ones that are going to make the most impact of the organisation. And we've got to think about that. Choose wisely. Not just pick the ones that people are screaming about the loudest or the ones that somebody finds interesting, but actually have a good reason for doing it. There's some performance reason, performance-driven reason for selecting a process for improvement. And then, of course, we need to make the improvements. And we're not doing this for hundreds uh, uh, or thousands of the processes. I mean, there's probably 10,000 processes in our organisation if we went down maybe to level five or six of a process hierarchy. Uh, that, that can build up dramatically. Uh, no, we're only doing this for the high-impact processes, the 20 or 30, 40 or 50 processes that are having the maximum impact on the organisation, the ones that we really must get uh, right. So we do all of this. With the circles are turning for the high-impact processes. And, and I think the, the circles, particularly the target assess respond drumbeat is defining process governance process management it's a three word role description you like if you like for the process owner role really tells us what we're doing if we're actively managing our processes then we're doing that all of the time for our high impact processes we're making fundamentally wise decisions evidence based decisions about which processes to improve and then we go on and make the improvements to the right processes this lets us do superior quality process management and good process management leads to good process improvement. Thanks for joining me for another Process Insight. Did you find it useful? If you did, the others in the series might help as well. Hit subscribe, ring the bell so you never miss any. In this Process Insight series, we discuss the theory and practice of process-based management and how to make it work in a sustained way in the real world. Practical approaches for real-life opportunities. You'll find more information about me and the work I do with clients around the world at my website. You have my contact details. I'd be delighted to connect. There are links below to some other information you might find useful. Thanks for sharing this time with me. If you'd like to continue the discussion, I'd love to hear from you.